Hey, hey, everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at price elasticity of demand, but this time we're going to take a look at the range of values and the applications of price elasticity of demand. And if you haven't checked out the other two videos I've posted regarding price elasticity of demand, make sure that you do because they work all together. Okay, so what do we mean by values? Well, the first thing is just a review. Let's take a look at what price elasticity of demand really means. And of course, it's the percentage change in the quantity demanded over the percentage change in the price, and these are the same product. So you could rewrite that as price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in the quantity of X over the percentage change in the price of X. So what will happen to the demand of the product if the price changes? Okay, or the quantity demanded of the product as the price changes, I should say. Well, there are five different values. Okay, so the range of values of price elasticity of demand. The first value is a value of elastic. The second is inelastic. The third is unit elastic. The fourth is a situation that's actually theoretical, but it's important to understand. It's perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic. So if you look at these, the ranges of elasticity go from, from zero to infinity. Okay? The range that we usually operate in, as you will see in these two, is somewhere between, say, oh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, zero and... 10 at the most, okay? So let's take a look at what, what this means, okay? So elastic, the range of value, if something's determined elastic, that means the price elasticity of demand is greater than one. Something is inelastic, the good is inelastic, the quantity demanded or the demand for the good is inelastic if the price elasticity of demand is less than one. We say it has unit elasticity or is unit elastic if the price elasticity of demand equals one. And if we end up with a situation where it's perfectly elastic, which we'll take a look at the graph, this is a perfectly horizontal demand curve, we would say that price elasticity of demand equals infinity, and perfectly inelastic is actually the opposite of that, which is where price elasticity of demand equals zero, which is a perfectly vertical uh, demand curve. So using the, the ranges here, uh, you've seen this graph is in a different, in another uh, uh, price elasticity of demand di uh, video that I made. And I use it to show the ranges of the diagram itself where you can show the ranges of elasticity. And the key point here is unit elastic is, is where the price elasticity of demand equals one. If you find out that your good is elastic, where price elasticity of demand is greater than one, or in this particular case, 3.3, then you know you're operating in this area of the demand curve. And in that case, the firm, the supplier, should drop his or its price in order to maximize revenues. Because P1, Q1 is the maximum revenue that can be generated for this particular good, because we know that because price elasticity of demand, or unit elastic point, is where revenues are maximized. The inelastic portion of the demand curve is represented here where the price elasticity of demand is less than one, or in this particular case, 0.626. So anytime a supplier finds out the price elasticity of demand is less than one, they're in the inelastic portion of the demand curve, and that firm should raise its price in order to maximize revenue. Inelastic, increase price to get to a point of unit elasticity, which will maximize revenues for the firm. One of the fairly theoretical uh, demand curves, or way of values, I should say, is a demand curve that's perfectly elastic. And that's when PED, or price elasticity of demand, equals infinity. And a nice, cute definition for that would be a product has perfect elastic demand, is completely responsive to any change in price, and therefore even the slightest change in price will result in no quantity demanded of the product. And a perfectly elastic demand curve is horizontal in nature, where any change in price will result in, in uh, no, quantity, no quantity demanded of that particular product. The perfect elastic demand curve is opposed to the perfectly inelastic demand curve, which is where price elasticity of demand equals zero, and a product that has perfect has perfectly inelastic demand is completely unresponsive to price changes and therefore a change in the price of the product will have no effect on the quantity demanded. And that graph, the perfectly inelastic demand curve, looks like this in that it's a perfectly vertical demand curve and I tell students inelastic, that looks like the letter I. It's very easy to mess these up. 
So inelastic is vertical because inelastic starts with letter I and that looks like a letter I. And therefore, any change in price will have no impact whatsoever on the quantity demand. And a nice, pro nice example of this might be um, this isn't th these is extreme theoretical thing. It never really happens. But, you know, you think about somebody who has diabetes, who is insulin dependent, you know, no matter the price, it can be pretty, pretty inelastic because um, somebody who has diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes type one is going to be dependent on the insulin for their very survival. So you can imagine the demand curve for that would be very steep. It, it is not perfectly uh, inelastic, but pretty close to it. OK, so those are the five values for um, price elasticity of demand. They are elastic, inelastic, unit elastic, perfectly elastic, and perfectly inelastic. Now, to wrap this video up, a couple, two other things. So it's like, why do we care about price elasticity of demand? And who does care about price elasticity of demand? Well, the interesting thing is that consumers don't really care that much. I mean, they're either going to buy it or not. They don't sit around thinking about the elasticity of it. But from the flip side, firms, it's very important to firms. So there are two applications, really. One is for firms and the other is for governments. So first, those are the three stakeholders primarily, right? Consumers, producers, firms, and government. Okay, so firms, they care about price elasticity demand because they're trying to maximize revenue. So firms benefit from knowing how responsive their consumers are to price changes at any given time. If a seller knows demand is highly elastic, she may wish to lower, to lower the price to capture a new customer's. But if the seller knows that the demand is highly inelastic, she may wish to raise her prices as she will not lose many sellers, but will enjoy higher revenues. And if you think about that, that demand curve, right, the, think about when you're operating in the highly elastic portion of the demand curve, it's better to lower price because you will maximize revenue. Whereas if you're in the inelastic portion of the demand curve, less than one, then you can raise prices but actually increase revenue because the price that goes up will not gr greatly affect um, uh, the quantity that's demanded of your product. Okay, And I got to thank Jason Welker for putting this together uh, very succinctly in his reader on microeconomics. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, it's worth it. Thank you, Jason. And I gave you credit down there in the corner. And lastly, applications of price elasticity demand, the government. What does the government care? Well, because the government wants to maximize tax revenue, and they also want to stay popular with the people. So the government needs to know how consumers will respond to taxes imposed on particular goods. For example, if the government wishes to raise revenues from taxing goods, it should know that relatively elastic goods, like a restaurant meal, will not raise much revenue because demand will drop as the price rises due to the tax. A tax, however, on a relatively inelastic good, for example, cigarettes, alcohol, booze of any kind, will raise a lot of revenue because most people will continue smoking and thus have to pay the tax. So governments care a lot about price elasticity demand, and the more inelastic a product is, the more likely it is that the government's going to slap a tax on it because it's not going to do, because two things won't happen. Number one, it won't greatly impact the quantity demanded of that product in the marketplace. And number two, any, it will, quantity demanded will go down, which always leads to some form of unemployment. And if you're in the government and more peop and people are becoming unemployed in your country, you are going to become unpopular. So if you have to tax something, which all governments do in order to have revenue, the best thing to tax is something that's fairly inelastic because not only will it not change the quantity demanded very much, but it'll also lead to less unemployment, which will mean that if you're in, in, in public office, uh, you're more likely to stay in power. So there you have it. The both the range of values of price elasticity demand and the applications of price elasticity demand. And this should be very helpful to you on the evaluation portion of your paper one questions on the IB exam. Okay, talk to you soon.